This one's fitted with special optical equipment to show in colors regions where the density of the air is changing. These effects can be photographed. Solid objects, like this nozzle, appear silhouetted against a colored background. When the compressed air jet is turned on, other colors appear. We have chosen red to show regions where density is increasing and blue regions where it is decreasing. A symmetrical wing section designed for high speeds is put in the tunnel. At low speeds, the air behaves as if it were incompressible. Whatever pressure changes there are, are so slight as to cause no color change. But as speed increases, the air does begin to show signs of compressibility. Colors show regions of increasing and decreasing density. The red area at the leading edge is the stagnation region where the air is being slowed down and becoming denser. Immediately behind are two blue areas where the rate of speeding up is greatest, causing a reduction in density. This diagram will remind us of what's happening. As the flight mark number increases, the flow at the point of maximum speed up on the wing reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. The wing has reached its critical Mach number. And when this is exceeded, a sudden sharp region of increasing density forms on the wing just behind the point of maximum speed up. This is a shock wave. It is a sudden jump in the pressure of the air. It grows and moves back as the Mach number increases. Shock waves can even be seen with the naked eye in certain atmospheric conditions. Watch them streaming back from the nose of this missile. There. This time, we're going to hold the picture still for a few seconds. Let us see a shock wave form again in the wind tunnel. A diagram shows what happens. At the critical mark number, there is a point on the wing where M equals 1. At higher speeds, the point grows into an area in which the flow is supersonic, that is, where M is greater than 1. Outside this area, the flow is still subsonic. M is less than 1. The rear boundary of the area is the shock wave itself. As the aircraft accelerates, so the area of supersonic flow increases and the shock wave moves back, growing larger and stronger. A shock wave at right angles to the airstream is the means by which the airflow suddenly decelerates from supersonic to subsonic speed. How are shock waves formed? On the rear part of the wing, every point, such as this one, sends out innumerable tiny pressure waves at the speed of sound. In the forward direction, these waves meet airflow in the opposite direction and make less and less progress until they reach a stage where they can't travel any further forward because the airflow itself is moving backwards supersonically. It's like trying to step off an escalator going the wrong way. The pressure waves constantly pile up here 
And this is the shock wave. A shock wave is a very narrow region, about one ten thousandth of an inch thick. Across this region, the supersonic airflow is violently reduced to subsonic speed. Much of the air's energy of movement, or kinetic energy, is dissipated as heat. The temperature of the air rises suddenly as it passes through the shock wave. There is also a sudden rise in pressure. The energy wasted as heat in the shock wave must be continuously supplied by the engines, otherwise the aircraft would decelerate. So as the aircraft approaches the speed of sound, it meets an additional kind of drag called wave drag. Wave drag is a large proportion of total drag at transonic speeds. As the speed of airflow is increased still further, the region of supersonic flow goes on growing larger and a second supersonic region starts to form on the lower surface of the wing with another shock wave. At speeds approaching the speed of sound, the most important result of the shock wave is to cause the airflow to separate from the wing's surface. This is called shock-induced separation. It produces a large turbulent wake, which alters the pressure distribution, lift is reduced, and the turbulence creates drag. In this aircraft, the turbulence strikes the tailplane, causes violent buffeting, and so limits its speed. Other aircraft experience such serious troubles as sudden loss of stability, and reduced effectiveness of the controls. We can't see separation in flight, but this aircraft has wool tufts stuck on the wings. They lie flush when the airflow is smooth and flap when shock-induced separation occurs. But shock waves don't only appear on wings. Speed up of the airflow occurs around the canopy and many other parts of an aircraft. Wherever it's great enough, there shock waves will form. Shock waves cause a vast increase in drag and may cause serious control troubles. <laughs> 